Happy daylight savings. You don't look you don't look too worse for wear, but uh, thanks for making it an hour early this morning. Um, as some of you may notice, there's a uh, a little flu bug going around our church right now. Um, why don't we start off by saying a word of prayer for Little River, who uh, has, is having a hard time right now. Uh, God, we we're grateful to to be here. We're we're, we're thankful that. Um, even on, on mornings where we don't get uh, maybe as much sleep as we would like, um, Lord, you are our provider and you're our sustainer. Um, and, and it is a privilege to come together and to worship you in Jesus' name uh, as a church. Lord, I lift up uh, those who are sick right now. Uh, I think of River. I think of Marcus and um, others um, who are kind of battling this stomach bug that's been jumping around. And, uh, Lord, I pray that you would bring healing and strength to them. And, uh, yeah, Lord, that, that they would um, sense your presence with them. Um, we, we just ask that your spirit would be with us this morning, that we would um, just have a greater awareness of your presence and a, and a willingness to, to seek you. Um, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to start off with Love So Great. I we'll invite you to stand and sing with us.
morning, Loon Mountain Ministry. You know what? Uh, I was thinking this morning, uh, and we'll say a word of prayer in a second, but um, we're all a little tired, losing that hour of sleep. It always seems like every year, uh, this weekend is on the worst possible weekend. And uh, this morning, it, it really hit me. I was like, you know what? If we get anything from God out of this service, it's definitely the Holy Spirit, because it's definitely not not us. So I'm um, excited that you guys can all be here, and, and for those who are joining online, um, and uh, we're just going to pray that, that God would use His Spirit to work through a bunch of needy people who are tired, and yeah, um, let's just proclaim our need. Lord, we come to you today. Um, Many of us just tired, and, and uh, you know maybe we had a lot to sn uh, shovel with the snow or to fight the, uh, the weather coming up. Maybe we're just exhausted because we lost an hour of sleep, Lord. But either way, uh, I, I thank you for the times that I am made aware of my need. Because when we are made aware of our need, we lean more into you. So, Lord, this morning, as you work through a bunch of needy people... Would you proclaim your gospel, the good news of Jesus, that he came to meet needy people and meet their needs uh, to reconcile us back to you. Lord, we thank you for that. And so today we worship you, we praise you, and we proclaim that we are needy and we need you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Sing the What a Beautiful Name.
misconception in our culture, in American culture today, that if, if we are willing, simply willing to look inward at ourselves, then we can kind of figure out everything that's wrong with us and kind of sort it out, and I just need to have this inward posture. But that's not the message of the gospel. It, it does begin with a place where we need to look in and say, as Nathan was saying, I'm in need, I, I, I'm broken, I'm sinful, but our salvation, our cure, the fix, does not come from within. The fix comes through faith in Jesus Christ. And when we come to that, when we come to that, that belief, that, that acceptance, that realization, when we're willing to surrender, it then becomes about lifting him high and fixing our gaze on him, uh, higher in our hearts, higher in our minds, because he is the only name under heaven by which men must be saved. And so um, that's kind of what this song is about. Um, so let's sing, Lift You High.
Jesus, we lift your name high. Father, we uh, just come before you humbly, yet boldly, knowing that uh, your love for us uh, is secure. And uh, we have confidence in that because of Christ and what he's done for us. He showed us the greatest love by coming to earth, living, laying down his life um, so that we could be forgiven, so that we can be set free to live a new life in relationship with you, Father. So we lift your name high. You are our hope. Jesus, you are our strength. And we give all these things to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Zena's going to lead us in announcements if you, you want to turn to the back of the bulletin. seated. Um, I'm going to release Sunday school. Today it is with Ellen. So if you have a kid from the ages 3 through 7, you can follow Ellen over here. And then today on nursery is Trish, and that is ages 0 through 2. Okay, SFC camp is April 1st through the 3rd. Registration ends March 27th, and you can email what, uh, two weeks until registration ends. And you can email Nathan about that. Um, the Not So Silent auction is March 21st through the 26th. It's in person and online. There's a little party at the end. Um, Sharon will be posting about food in the Loon Mountain Ministry Gals Facebook group. So you can comment down below what you'll bring to the auction. Um, Waterville Valley service every Sunday you can catch the church chair at 7 30 a.m. for the 8 a.m. service the 8 11 youth group Friday night skiing at the Kank from 6 to 8 p.m. and you meet at the Jenkins house yes just uh, no more Friday night skiing there's we'll no more 6 30 no more Friday night skiing and now it's at 6 30 is on Wednesdays now no, we're still doing Friday. 6.30 to 8 Friday. Okay, 6.30 to 8 no on dinner. Friday. No dinner, just snacks. And no skiing. And no skiing. And no skiing. Or the backyard. They have a backyard. Uh, women's coffee hour is on Mondays at the coffee shop at 10 a.m. Dessert first Bible study Tuesday evenings <coughs> at 7 p.m. here at the coffee shop. And there's another Bible study on March 21st from 6 to 7 p.m. here at the coffee shop as well. Um, missional community groups, we have three. We have one led by the Jenkins, the Lindos, and the Schroeders. You could talk to any of them if you were interested in joining. Um, and Right Now Media, a really cool app that they want you to use because we have a subscription to it. Um, I think that's everything. Thank you. Thank you, Zena. I can testify that I don't really like giving announcements, and uh, thanks for being willing. You do a good job. <laughs> awesome. We have one more song. Um, this one is called Give Me Faith. And, uh, you know, whether we're willing to admit it or not, we all struggle with unbelief. And I think the very nature of sin is that we're acting in unbelief because we, we are believing in that moment, whether um, no matter what the sin is, that our way is better than God's way, right? And there's a story um, in the Gospels of a father whose daughter is sick. And he comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, if you are willing, please, would you heal my daughter? And Jesus responds saying, uh, I'm willing, everything is possible for him who believes. And he says, I do believe, but help me with my unbelief. And so it just goes to show that even in the midst of us seeking God and pursuing him, we can still struggle with this, this doubt, this unbelief, and he will meet us there. If we'll only come to him and say, help, Lord, please help me. And so this song is about just that. Give me faith. I'll invite you to stand and sing.
everybody. In the front of your bulletin, if you would like to read along with me, um, we'll recite though what the, the, what the verses are first for the online people. First going to do Titus chapter 3 verses 4 through 6, then James chapter 1 verse 5, then Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10, and then Hebrews chapter 13 verses 5 through 6. Ready? Okay. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. 
So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Thank you. All right, thank you. You guys can be seated. Just realized we didn't have the wireless mic or the headset mic set up, so we're going to be going handheld today. Um, before we get into it, uh, I um, just wanted to say a word of prayer. One, um, for uh, Tin up on the mountain, he uh, has graciously um, uh, agreed to, to lead that service up there. Uh, it was cool. He was, I think, handing out cookies with LRT parents this morning to uh, people at the mountain, which is awesome. Um, and then also, uh, we as a as a local church community, but also you know joining in with a worldwide community as we pray and keep Ukraine um, in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, you know, we we've talked this morning about being in need because we're a little sleepy, um, and uh, and it, while God does sympathize with our need, even though it might seem small here, um, we want to make sure that we are. Uh, continuing to think and pray and and give and be generous and whatever that looks like um, to those who are who are really suffering um, out in Ukraine. So, Lord, we come to you this morning. Uh, we are in need of your word. We are in need of the grace that the gospel brings. Um, God, I just uh, I thank you uh, for the willingness um, uh, in our need to. Uh, to serve and love and give and be generous. Thank you for Tan and, and uh, his desire to um, share up on the mountain and and to lead that service um, in you know our church's uh, moment of need as Marcus is sick. Um, God, would you be with him up there? Would you uh, give him peace as he speaks and loves and and uh, points those up there to you um, to fulfill that need. Um, and Lord, we, we lift up the Ukraine. Um, God, uh, may we uh, just continue to intercede for them. Lord, I, I don't know what it looks like to impress on our hearts to be generous towards uh, what you, what, what's going on in Ukraine. But Lord, would, would we keep them first and foremost um, lifted up in our prayers as they are uh, really, really suffering. Um, but Lord, uh, motivate us in, in whatever way you see fit for each of us here. Um, whether that's really crazy and we go to Ukraine to help and support and love, or it's simple in the way that we just give um, to organizations that, that are out there uh, loving and serving and, and being a place of refuge uh, for those people who uh, have been just uprooted from their lives, from their homes, from their families, some of them. Uh, just be with them, Lord. We, we want to continue to keep that awareness uh, of Ukraine. So we love you, Lord. We trust you, though. And we trust that you're good. We trust that uh, everything is worked out according to your will. Um, and so uh, we, we lay that before you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. First, you know, uh, first cool thing I just picked up on as we listen to some of the songs. Now, I, I did, you know, Marcus spoke with me last night. Um, that's when I found out I was preaching today. Um, he, he shared uh, some of his notes, and so I, I you know, fortunately picked up uh, where he kind of left off with, with some of these passages that we read today. But, but um, and I don't know if he communicated with Drew, but... Um, we're going to talk today about the second of the um, seven sins or seven virtues. Um, there, there's these coinciding seven uh, deadly sins and seven virtues uh, of the um, of the church. And um, the second one is the sin of greed or covetedness. And and the opposing virtue is generosity. And this morning um, it was very fitting that we talked about being in need. Um, very fitting that we, that we understand our place of need because that need can only be met by God himself. And we seek to meet that, that need with our greed of excess um, for everything else. And that sometimes they're bad things and sometimes they're 
in the middle things, and sometimes there are good things. But either way, all those things were never meant to be put in the place of our ultimate need, which is God himself. So um, kind of cool. Like I, I didn't expect it to tie in like that. So maybe that's the first, uh, you know, checkbox number one for the Holy Spirit. Sweet. I like that when things work together. A lot of times when we even plan this out, and I actually knew I was preaching for weeks in advance, we still don't plan it out that well. So so that was cool. Um, yeah, um, like I said, we're, we're going to talk a little bit today about um, greed and covetedness. Greed is a, is a better word just because we don't really use that word covet, coveting or covetedness that much anymore. I think we get that concept. But um, the idea of greed... I think we can get, especially in America. Um, and then the flip side, generosity. I did a little bit of um, looking up just, uh, you know, some different definitions. I always like to define some words or figure out how, uh, you know, different dictionaries define words. Um, and when I looked up greed and covetousness specifically, I there was a thread of, of commonality. And that thread had to do with excessiveness. There was this, an excessiveness that was rooted in, in selfishness. So it was wanting more and more of something. Okay? Some of them said it was bad. Some, some of them said it might even be good things. But, but it was excessive desire rooted in selfishness and wanting more than what is needed. We talked a little bit about need so far today. More than what is needed. An excessiveness, an excessive desire rooted in selfishness for more than what is needed. I got thinking of this, and and I, I got to say, this is, you know, I say this pretty often when I preach. This is definitely a me-first church when it comes to judgment, um, because me-first, I am a greedy person. Um, and the moment that I, whenever I approach any topic, whether it's greed or anything else, I have to look inward first because if I started look start looking outward, I'll miss the point. You know, it's the it's the log in my brother's eye and this or sorry the speck in my eye. What is it? <laughs> it's the log in my my eye and the speck in my brother's eye, right? I have to look inward first, and we have to be honest with ourselves, brutally honest sometimes. The truth is, these seven deadly sins. Okay, last week we talked about pride. This week we're talking about greed. If you don't think you have either of those sins and you think you're good on those, then I can assure you that just in you admitting that you don't have them is, is probably a hint that you do. I don't think anybody in the world is completely free from greed or sin other than Jesus himself. And so we got to start with me first. And I was thinking, I'm like, okay, well, what does greed do to me? What does it drive in my life and in, in the way that I think, in my behavior? What does it drive? Uh, I was preparing late last night and, and my wife was like, all right, well, let me help you. Oh, I can help you with what you're greedy with. <laughs> she said, you're very greedy with ice cream. You love ice cream and you always want more and more of it. It's true. You could kind of make a blanket statement for all sweets in, in my regard. I have a, definitely have a sweet tooth. Um, my greed drives my desire for more ice cream. It drives my desire to watch video after video on YouTube. It drives my desire to keep on scrolling on social media. I'm, I'm just trying to fill my time and be content with anything other than empty space or, or, you know, the idea that I could talk to God or be with him. So I fill it. Greed drives my desire for more money, more things. I want one more thing. I got really into bikes over the last two years, as many of you guys probably know. And there's a common phrase in the, in the mountain bike world, and it's how many bikes is the right amount of bikes? And it's N plus one. The number you have plus one. And isn't that funny? Because the world we live in, it continues to drive into this, this thought process. And, and, and it, it sort of, it, it 
builds upon itself is that is that everything about the world that we live in tells you you need this one more thing you need one more thing and then you'll be content and and what's funny about it is you get that one more thing after like a lot of work to get it and you're like oh now i've made it now i'm here and you realize oh no there's that other thing that i want and it's just one more thing and one more thing greed drives our desire to fulfill our idea of contentment with anything and everything other than God. Simply put, greed and covetousness drives our own selfish desire to be content. It was interesting, I, I, I did this a little earlier on in my faith journey, and I, I started to think about some of these concepts like greed or selfishness, and I was like, I was like, is there any instance that greed or selfishness or stuff like that, it would be appropriate? And I, when I started thinking about it today and, and last night, it was like, man, like, can you want an excess? Like, what if I was greedy for my time with the Lord? Can you ever have too much? Now, you might sit down and read your Bible too much. And that's possible. But can you ever, will you ever look back on your life and say, man, I spent too much time loving God? <laughs> not me. That's not going to be me. I'll tell you that much. Can we ever spend too much time? And, and you know, when we think about, like, what am I really putting in that place of, of greed? What am I really greedy for? What am I wanting more and more of? Um, there's a... When it comes to stewarding your stuff, more so not just your stuff, but your life, there's three things that, that uh, often come up when it comes to stewardship. We steward our time, we steward our talent, and we steward our treasure. You guys might have heard of those three words thrown around pretty frequently. Where is your time going? Where is your talent going? And where is your treasure going? Right? And so we're thinking about greed. If I want to know, what am I wanting more and more of in excess so that I can be content? What is that thing? Because until we, until, you know, it's kind of the idea of like, you don't really know how to approach a battle until you know who you're fighting. So, you know, maybe this is an opportunity for us to kind of take a mental stop. Well, if I were to ask you what your schedule looks like in this next week, it might tell me something about what you possibly could be greedy for. Just because something you do a lot of doesn't mean that you're greedy for it. It just means it has potential for it to be that. Next one, where is your talent going? What are you guys using, you know, using your bodies and the, the things that you've learned over your lifetime and your skills, what are you using them for? That'll tell you a little bit about what you may or may not be greedy for. Now, where is your treasure going? Now, obviously, that's money. Okay, if I looked at your bank account, it's an uncomfortable topic. But, but if you, if I looked at your bank account, where is your money going? But also, where's your stuff going? Right? Some people they're like, I don't have a problem with money. They just have a problem with stuff. Where is your stuff? Where is your treasure going? And you might get an idea of what you might be greedy for. We're gonna look at two of these verses on here uh, that talk about greed. It's funny, we just got out of Ecclesiastes and we're back into it again. The last time I preached, we were in Ecclesiastes and, and we were supposed to be out of it and now we're in it again. Anyways, Ecclesiastes 5, verse 10. You can look at it on your bullet, uh, yeah, on your bulletin right there. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. Is that N plus one. How many dollars is enough? N plus one. You'll never be satisfied. And the more you get of it, the more it's, it's, it's like a drug, right? The more you get of a drug, the more you need to get that same level of satisfaction from it, right? And that's what we do. Hebrews 13, five through six. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. 
So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? What's really cool about this verse, okay, is there's, so the, the, the two verses there obviously focus on money, okay, your treasure portion of that, okay? It's not to say, you know, we, we can't be greedy about other things, but they focus on the money. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Now, it doesn't say because God will give you a bunch of money and you should just, just trust that he will eventually. It says, it says, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. For whatever reason, that verse is stating that, that your desire to find contentment in money won't be satisfied by God giving you a bunch of money. It will be satisfied by God's presence. Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Why is that? Is it that our is it that our desire for money? And I know you know, thinking of it from that light is is a little more negative. But but maybe thinking of it from this like, money is a good. It, it can be a great thing. Okay, it's the love of money that can that can become this idol. It's not money isn't bad. Money can do wonderful things in this world. Otherwise, why the heck would a church be asking for it? If it was evil, we'd want away from that stuff, right? Money can do wonderful things. It's because what money money can do. Money can bring blessing. Money can can bring provision. Money can bring provision to Ukraine. You know, as I prayed about, like like money can do wonderful, wonderful things. And what's interesting is this verse isn't saying you need more money. It says you need more God. The reason we need more God is because God is the keeper of all the money, right? All of it's his. Um, and we're going to transition to a time of generosity, but, but this is really important. When we talk about greed, okay, and we talk about these seven sins and these seven virtues, we got to understand that we identify with these seven sins, okay? You might have elements of these virtues, but the only one who truly identifies with these virtues is Jesus. The only one who truly... So, so when we think about greed, you got to start with, this is me. This is me. This is us. This is where we are. All right, let's talk about generosity. Let's let's talk about how Jesus represented generosity. Generosity isn't just about giving up what is convenient, right? Um, our time, our treasure, our talent. Maybe you have some extra off the top, right? And you're like, oh, well, I paid all my bills this month. I got a little extra, so I'll give it to the church kind of thing. Like, that's, that was never meant to be what generosity was. I've got a little extra time. Yeah, maybe I'll go volunteer here and there. You know, I've got a little extra talent here, and I, to use your talent, you kind of have to have some time too. So, you know, but but use it just off the top. It's just or just you know the, the last bit, and and we do that often. I love in uh, this one's not on your bulletins, um, but I I often go to this. Um, it's uh, from Second Samuel twenty four, and uh, King David. Um, essentially, I mean, he, he's tons of power, tons of wealth, and all that. And but because of his position, people want to do everything to make him happy because it's good to have the king on your side, right? And uh, and he's offered all these sacrifices, you know, animals to sacrifice to God. And and David doesn't want free sacrifices. He doesn't want things that won't cost him. And this is beautiful. Je uh, sorry, not Jesus. David says. In verse 24 of chapter 24, no, but I will buy it from you for a price. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. Now you might say, well, David's rich and that's just a drop in the bucket. I don't know exactly how much 50 shekels of silver is. Um, honestly, and what percentage of wealth that is from David, but it's like the heart of that. It's the heart of that. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God that cost me nothing. Generosity happens when we when it costs us. When it costs us. Um, 
we all recommend the Bible Project uh, very frequently. They have a lot of wonderful videos and resources. Check them out if you get the chance. They did a great video on generosity. And in this video, they painted this really cool picture of, of, a, of a host of a party. And at the host of a party, the, the house is theirs. And, and if they're a good host, they're going to decorate their house and it's going to look magnificent. And, and you're going to come in and you're going to be like, wow, this is an awesome party. And they'll be generous with their stuff and the resources that they have. And they, because they want you to enjoy the party and they have gifts and, and, and they're generous with that. And it gives us this picture, this Bible project video, it gives us this picture of God being the host of a party. And God owns it all. This world is God's. It's his house. And, and the life that we are living is his party. Now, if the host wasn't a good host, we'd come in and probably have a bad time and want to do things a little differently. Now, we kind of do that. We, we, we tell God, we come to God's party, this life, and we say, God, you know, I like those rules that you had for the party, you know, and we want to be somewhat respectful. I'll be just respectful enough of your stuff, but I also like, these gifts are really cool. So like, I'll just like take those and those and those and, and, and we're greedy with the gifts that God is giving us in our house and missing the whole idea of what the party is. The whole idea of the party that God has put on for us in this life there's a reason we like to party here at Lumbaugh Ministry. But the, the reason for the party isn't just so we can indulge, take more, be excessive with, with the gifts that God has given us. It's to, it's to take the gifts and enjoy them and give God the glory for them. To give God the glory for them because he is the host of the party and we are just his guests. And what's beautiful, looking back to that Hebrews verse on the front of your bulletins, like I said, the reason why God's presence is so important as far as meeting our needs is that he is the owner, he's the keeper, he's the creator of everything, and everything is his. The, the clothes that we're wearing, the houses that we live in, the money that we have in our accounts, the talents that he's given us, the time that he's given us, they're all gracious and loving gifts and you know what's cool is he gives those to everybody he gives those to everybody and i'm willing to bet if you're here here in this building right now you're probably wondering like i i, I kind of want to like give god the glory for that otherwise why would you be here most people are out enjoying that gift of snow right now right that's not not to say that's bad but, but they don't have any. They might not have any desire to give God the glory for it. They're just going to indulge in it. They might indulge I'm, I'm in ice cream, like myself. They might indulge in YouTube videos, like myself. I don't know what that thing is for you. Jesus shows us a, a beautiful example. Uh, there's well, there's two verses here that talk about it. I want to go ahead and read them of what generosity looks like and God's generosity towards us. First one in Titus 3, 4 through 6. But when the kindness of God and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Did God's generosity to give us the Holy Spirit cost him? You bet. James 1.5 If any of you lacks wisdom, you, ask, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. This is another passage that is not on here, coming from 2 Corinthians 8.9, probably one of the most popular verses that's quoted in regards to generosity. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, by his poverty, might become rich. What was cool about the example of Jesus' generosity 
is that he was fully God. And so he owned everything. You know what's cool about when you own everything? You don't need everything from everybody else. And so what did he do? He just gave away. There's a reason he didn't come and, and you know, have more riches than Solomon and, and houses left and right. There's a reason he didn't have that because he didn't need it. There's a reason he only had 12 misfits who were, you know, fishermen, failed students, following him around. Well, it's because he didn't need an army of strong, big soldiers because he had plenty of angels in heaven ready to fight. He had everything, so he needed nothing. That's what's beautiful about those of us who are in Christ. We've been given generously the Holy Spirit and God's presence with us. And so that awareness, that reminder that God is with us is, is all that we'll ever need. Is all that we'll ever need. This is a season of Lent, and I'm learning a lot about what it means to like be needy. And, and typically in Lent, we, we give up something. And, and it reminds us of our need. And for so much of our lives, we just go on living just you know, allowing that need to manifest itself in a way that is just like, oh, I'm going to eat my ice cream and it makes me happy and fill, fills me and I'm content. Or I'm going to need, I need my quality time with my family or I need my paycheck to come in. And when that comes in, I'm going to be content and happy and all, you know, all that. Like, and, and we do all these things to fill that need. And so this time of Lent has been every year. It's very impactful for myself as I'm reminded for my need, and, I, and I'm forcing myself to not indulge in what I usually would to meet that need, which is anything other than God. Anything other than God. Because it's, it's hard. Because God doesn't taste like ice cream all the time to me. Ice cream seems to taste better. Right? Because those things meet these immediate things that we think that we need, but in reality... We don't. Our time, our treasure, and our talents, thinking about that, when we think about how we're generous, think about where your time's going, think about where your talents are going, thinking about where your treasure's going. What's beautiful about being a Christian versus a non-Christian is even a generous, a non-Christian, which is good, there's plenty of generous non-Christians out there. Don't get me wrong. We're not painting a picture here that like, oh, like, I got this picture at Bible school, and I assumed that students would come out thinking like, oh, well, everyone who's not a Christian is like the devil, and everyone who is a Christian is a saint. And I'm like, you guys are in for a rude awakening, because there's going to be people in this community that love way better than Christians, that give way better than Christians. I'm not trying to say that, but the truth is about a, a, a generous person who's a non-Christian is they can only give as much as they have and they can only have as much as they work for and so they're capped but a Christian a Christian can only give as much as they have but what they have hasn't been gained by their work it's been gained by the work of Jesus and so we have the world to give because no matter how much time I give, I'll have an eternity in heaven. What's a, what's a couple years? If I give away all my talents and wear down my body, well, guess what? I'm given a new body. If I give away all my treasure, what does that matter? Where I'm going to live one day, the streets are paved in gold. And that's not, to, that's not to say they're amazing and I'm going to be like scooping the gold off the ground. That's to say... Gold is so low value in the kingdom of heaven that we, that we walk all over it because there's, there's things of far greater value. So giving, being generous with your, your time, your treasure, and your talents one day, it will never come back void because we'll have abundantly more than you can ever think or imagine in what it looks like to be in the kingdom of heaven with God. So today as we... Think of where we are in this place of greed. We, th we look to where Jesus is in his perfect generosity. 
and we and when we look to him, we can then be generous in a way that's that's far greater, that's far more than I could ever do on myself by myself. And I can give of my life. That's what the apostles did. They gave of their lives. Pretty sure they lost plenty of time because they were mostly all killed earlier than they probably should have died. They probably were beaten many times and, and their, their talents and whatever their jobs were, they, they used them not just for their games but for God's. And certainly they lost all their money. And yet they went to the cross or what, however they died in martyrdom proclaiming that Jesus was all that they ever needed. Let's pray. Lord, um, I just, I'm just reminded, like I said, of, of, of my need this morning. Help me not to misplace that, that need, the desire to be content in things that I, I'm trying to excessively get and be greedy for, Things to fill the, the gap, the space in my heart that should be filled by you. Father, help us today um, to go out and be generous. Be generous with our money, whether that's giving to the church or whether that's giving to other organizations or we're, or we're generous with our stuff, allowing people to, to use our stuff because our stuff will, will fade away. Lord, being generous with our time, giving and volunteering and, and showing up and being places and generous with our talents, taking the things that we that we love and, and, and we are skilled at and using them not just for our gain, but for others' gains and, and to glorify you, Lord. Help us to be generous. And we know that we can be generous because Jesus was for us. So Lord, we're only giving away what we've already been given. Lord, we love you, and we trust you, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you for joining us this morning in worship. Um, so glad you could make it out. Safe travels on your drive home, but we welcome you to hang out, fellowship, grab some coffee, grab some baked goods. Um, go and have a blessed day. Thanks.